Hi, this is Becky Nunn with Nunn Design, and I'm in the studio today with Beetleholic. And in this video, I'd like to show you how you can colorize resin and color block it, like these samples that we're seeing here. This is the piece that we're going to be making with the open frame hexagon piece and another smaller hexagon piece. For this video, you will need to have already watched the video showing how to apply the tape on the back side. As we pour in that colorized resin, you're going to need to have that barrier. You're going to also want to watch the video showing how to colorize the resin. And in this case, I colorized it with a black pigment and a white pigment. You'll also need some flush cutters to cut off the loop and a couple of stir sticks and a toothpick. The first step we're going to want to do is we're going to want to trim off this little loop on the top and that is what's going to fit right inside of the other open frame pendant. So using your flush cutters, you're going to want to just get right flush to that base. I always try to hold my piece or cup my piece so that when that piece comes off it doesn't go shooting across the room and maybe smack your coworker or something fun like that. That's not so good. So just go ahead and cut off that edge and don't worry too much about it if you don't get it exactly flush because we're going to be embedding that and covering it up with the resin. Once you have that loop cut off, you're going to go ahead and place it inside wherever you would like it to be. I kind of want mine to be maybe a little bit off-centered and kiltered a little bit. Like right there. Let's just try that. And then you're going to want to press it down and burnish it onto that piece of packing tape and that will create a nice even seal around the base of the whole piece. And that's what will prevent your resin from spilling over into the other sections. When I'm working with my resin, I usually always like to put it on a business card because it's easy then to pick up and transfer around and not worry about touching the resin or spilling the resin over. So go ahead and place it on a business card. I think because I'm going to be working black on black, maybe I'll use this side of the card so it'll be easier for us to see. So I'm going to put the black around the outside and the white in the inside. So let's start with the white. I've already mixed a two-part resin and then I added a small amount of pigment to create this nice white. You're going to want to go ahead and pick a little tiny bit like this. And I always under pour because you can always add. But if you have too much, it's harder to clean up. Plus, you want to just pour a small amount at a time so that you don't worry about overfilling or getting any on that edge because you're going to want to have that hexagon shape on that upper lip be nice and gold. I mixed my resin a while back, so this is starting to get a little bit thick. So when you're doing yours, don't worry if it's not quite this thick. But you can see I just poured a couple drops, a couple drops, and as I wait, you see how that just kind of bled out to the sides, and it was slightly domed, and now it's gone flat. Then you're going to go ahead and take your black, and you're going to do that exact same thing, but now on that outside edge. This is actually, let's see, it's looking a little bit more charcoal than black, so if you wanted it to be a jet black, you would add a little bit more pigment. So now I'm just going around and letting it drizzle right into the base. And you're going to want to just take your time. So just add in resin. And like I said, this is getting thick, so it's going a little bit slower. If you had just freshly poured your resin and mixed it, it would be a lot more runny. But by going slow, I can really control 
where I'm placing the resin and also really making an effort not to get any on those side edges. I'm gonna stop and with my toothpick, I'm gonna go in and move that resin around a little bit more manually. And see how that um, cut edge was right there? See how I'm now covering it up. So look at this. When I released, I had my fingernail, I had my finger on that plastic. I pressed down and another contact point so it didn't lift up the piece altogether. I'll show you that again. It's just a nice little trick so when you're working with the resin. But by moving it to the different angle, I can see these other side edges really easily. So here I'm going to do it again. See, I'm going to press down with my toothpick and lift my finger. Rotate it. And now I'm ready to probably add a little bit more resin. So the side that we're seeing right now that's facing up, this is actually going to be, if you want it to be, the back side. So if you did, by chance, get any on the the uh, metals right here, the, either the copper or the gold, it's not going to show. But if you wanted this to be the front side, or as the piece flips over and you want the front side to present nicely. But if you do spill it, it's going to be just fine. I have a tighter fit right here. So that might be something that you want to take into consideration when you're laying your inside piece into the design is that it's going to be a little bit more tricky to maneuver if you have a really tight fit right here. If you want to, you can go ahead and continue to fill the piece because you can see it's kind of going a little bit concave and that's what resin does. And as you pour more in, it'll either level off or it'll start to dome. You won't want to put too much in because then it'll start to move into the white. So we're going to stop there. And this piece here is one that I'd already done. And so it is already cured. So you can see that the piece on this side has a little bit of a concave. There's area right here had a little bit more so it even kind of um, went over the lines a little bit but that's fine because this is the side that we're really going to be focusing on. So once the piece is done you're going to want to just remove the plastic tape by peeling it off like this. And if you have any residue that you have on the back side you can either use your finger to kind of um, rub it off and it'll kind of ball up the plastic, the little extra bit of adhesive will ball up, or you can use um, like a fingernail polish remover a, or something like that to remove that extra goo. And that is how you make a blocked colorized resin piece. This is Becky Nunn with Nunn Design on location here at Beetle Holic, and this was a super fun project. Well, I'm glad you joined me. Thank you.